We got Disney's Stockholm Syndrome, the game. I mean, Disney's Beauty and the Beast, the game. Beauty and the Beast. Featuring 3D Game Board. Beauty and the Beast. Gaston! Gaston's the ultimist. Gaston, he's the real hero of the story. He was, man. Tried to kill the beast. The beast is a freaking werewolf. He's trying to prevent bestiality between Bill and the beast. That's a sin. Shh. Can't believe they made him gay and stuff in the new uh, movie. The live action movie. So you got the spinner. So this is basically the board. And uh, you build it. So uh, let me do that. See? It's stairs that you build. Climb up. The horse. Goes here. And Belle's father goes here. And uh, here's Belle. There's Gaston. Gotta die. You got different. Mirrors and different the cup family here and a fork. You you know you got different things um you can find and don't have any clue what this I think it goes here. Yeah. So and the beast he gets up there, he turns into the handsome prince. Anyway, he switches from beast to prince, I think, on some of these spaces or whatever. The die has numbers on it and it has a spin to things, but most of the stickers have rubbed off, so I'll have to fix that. Let's look at the rules. First of all, It says here how to create it and build it. Create Bill's Enchanted World. Enchanted, all right. And then, of course, you have set up. On your turn, you roll the die. You land on rose space, that's what you do. And if you run a bell, guest on, or beast, trade the different spaces. And basically, you win the game by. I think Bell starts. Bell starts here. Gaston starts here. Basically, you play. A, you play as the different the four main characters. Play as one of these four main characters, and these other things are just these other ones are put on the board to cover up these spaces. And when you get to them, you pull them out. See, like, okay, that one. See, they cover up the different spaces. It's just. See, they cover up the spaces, right? So then when one of your characters lands on that space, when you press this, you move it. 
press these you move these different ones move it this is a trade places go anywhere enchanted object that's that that enchanted object and every turn I think you got to move this when you spin this you also have to move it one thing too so that's how it works well anyway you pick up one of these if you got Bill she goes up a stair if you get him he goes up a stair whoever makes it up to top first wins you're trying to have Bill win because if she gets all the way up the stairs she kisses she falls in love with the dang beast kisses him and he turns into this handsome ass prince sorry girls that's not realistic that's not what happens if you don't girls what you gotta realize is all men are beasts to start with and there ain't none of them gonna turn into some damn handsome ass princes even when you fall in love with them and kiss them you're gonna have to accept them the way they are that's simple Stop trying to complicate things. Y'all always try and change men. In this case, she's trying to change Beast into the Handsome Prince when she should just accept him as a beast. Anyway, this is, um, so y'all women, y'all always trying to control us. Now, why we call this game and the show Beauty and the Beast, why we call it Stockholm it Syndrome, uh, the movie, is because, well, if you actually watch the movie, you'll realize that uh, what happened was Beast was cursed. He's been that way for like a hundred something years, okay? He's cursed a long time by a daggum witch to become basically a werewolf. And all his maid servants and junk they've been you know they're freaking they're freaking whatever they're uh they've been cursed too all because the asshole wouldn't give the daggum witch some food or some shit well poor beggars need to get a job they don't need to be begging they need to get a freaking job so he was trying to get to tell the poor old witch. It's a typical storyline. You, you you piss the witch off because if you're a man, you piss the witch off by um being um wanting a damn beggar to get a job. If you're a woman and you piss the witch off because you look prettier than her or some shit. That's basically the bullshit it is. Not everybody's pretty, so deal with it. If you're ugly, deal with it. That's why they make so much diggum makeup and perfume is because people are ugly. Okay, deal with it. And uh, people that are homeless and beggars don't need to be homeless. They need to find a job. Now, if the beggar had asked to be one of his servants, if the witch had asked to be a servant or something, like asked for a job instead of begging at the castle for some food, like a bum, he probably wouldn't have kicked the witch out. He would have probably gave the witch a job. I mean, he, if you, if you watch the movie, every single table, chair, pot, pan, every single item, uh, household appliance, whatever, has been converted into a dig and furniture has been converted into a, 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 the, the spirit or soul of every one of these people have been transferred into the furniture and the, and the, the the pots and the pans and the dishes and the 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 clock and the candlesticks and everything around there, every single uh, the rug even everything in the castle has dude had, must have had like hundreds of servants for every single piece of furniture, every single pot, pan, dish. 
<coughs> the only thing that hasn't been converted into furniture is like freaking clothing. I mean, uh, that that doesn't have a personality on his own is clothing. This guy hired hundreds of hundreds of people. He was a capitalist. He hired lots of servants. Obviously, he was a good capitalist because not only when they got cursed, when they got cursed, they kept staying with him. Now, we don't know if his servants had Stockholm Syndrome or not, but uh, no, he was just a good boss. He was a good boss. They just wanted people to do their job and work. These people got transferred into basically what they did when they worked for him. He had a whole family of cups. The Teeth Cup family. He had a whole family working for him. They were living under his roof working for him. He's probably the most capitalist prince we have of any of the princes. And he's converted into a werewolf and all his servants, his workers, are converted into... The item, the, the, the furniture, they're converted into the furniture, basically. And the um, rugs and the... Um, seriously. Now, anyway, here's what happens. Bell's dad. Bell's dad. All right. Bell's dad. He is one day out hunting. He's hunting. Gaston hunts. Bell's dad's hunts. So, the Bell's dad, this guy, this guy right here, Bell's dad. He hunts, right? Gaston hunts. So, he's probably thinking that Gaston likes Bell, and he's wanting to hook him up, right? Now, everybody knows that there's this castle and there's these where this werewolf creature that they've seen gaston seen them bell's dad's probably seen them so they out hunting right gaston just wants to kill him because it's manly and uh everything and he's like gaston can get any baby once he has three girls at the bar all like oh gaston <laughs> but he wants bill <laughs> for some reason Probably because she's a virgin and those girls at the bar, he's already hit that. Um, anyway, that's not the point. <laughs> Maybe this is part of, part of the point. I'm not sure. But just, just saying. All right. So they're out hunting. They see this werewolf creature, which is the beast. And uh, Gaston goes back and he runs away. Gaston, the manly man, runs away. Goes back to town. He's like, oh, there's a werewolf. Now... Bill is basically like, what happened to my dad? And he's like, uh, I don't know. So she runs off to go find her dad. She's smart, educated, and all that, and she runs off to find her dad, and her dad's locked up in his cellar. Which he, which the Beast has a perfectly legitimate reason to lock up somebody who is breaking and entering his house and trying to shoot him. Seriously, this guy does not kill this guy. He does not kill Bill's dad. Instead, he locks him up and puts him in jail. She has every right to do so. Matter of fact, he could have clawed him up and ate him for dinner lunch. He would have been totally justified in doing so. Bill loves her dad so much that she's like, I'll stay the summer with you if you release my dad. So they strike a deal. She basically prostitutes herself out to this guy to be his, um, nanny, maid, whatever. Anyway, even she realizes the guy's a good guy because she falls in love with him. She's the one that initiated the idea that, to, um, stick with, to save her dad, get him out of jail, hit his jail of his house which it was his house 
technically the land he's the prince the duke whatever he's the leader of the land i mean this guy is trying to kill the king i mean if you think about it he's trying to kill the king and replace him and become the king himself that's what gaston is trying to do he's trying to um he's trying to start a, a revolution he's uh starting a revolution uprising now a uh, guess Gaston and the mayors and a few other people are like the big members of society that have are the children of children of children that were outside because we don't know how many years a hundred years maybe 200 years he's been cursed with this he's never gonna become a beast he's never gonna stop becoming a beast until he becomes in love for some goofy reason that that has anything to do with lifting a curse but anyway he captures this guy because he's breaking and entering in his house and instead of killing the guy ripping him up and eating him because this guy looks fat man look at this guy fat guy man a werewolf this werewolf doesn't even rip him up and eat him like this guy has got a heart enough to be like okay you're going to jail for your crime of breaking and entering and shooting at me and she's like uh can you release my father i'll stay with you all summer long for like three months or four months or whatever just release my father because she loves her daddy she got some daddy issues you never see her mom she must not have a mom she's been raised by a single father And the only guy that's really interested in her, in her is this big manly guy, which she she likes manly guys. Look at that beast. <laughs> He's big and manly and strong and stuff. She just and the beast and Gaston have basically the exact same personality. He's all mean and bad and all grouchy and manly and beasty and. Gaston's the same way. He's an arrogant prick. So I mean, they, they're the exact same person. Gaston's already trying to get this girl and she won't give it up. And this guy's he's going to be the gentleman because that's how he was raised like a hundred something years ago. And he's a capitalist and everything and he's still keeping these... He's still keeping his employees. He's had them employed for a hundred years. He could have fired them all and once they got turned into teapots and shit and been like <coughs> <coughs> you ain't living in <coughs> my house anymore get out of here he could have busted them and broke them and they're just they're glad they're they're freaking glassware and silverware he he as a beast is now 10 times stronger as a werewolf than he was and he could easily just destroy all these little freaking all these little peasants of his he could easily be like okay this is a broom he could have just broke it and killed it these pots he could have picked them up and just threw them and broke them he could have killed all of these he could have busted all the furniture broke all the dishes he could have literally killed all of these people that were converted into him but he has the heart to not break any of them and keep them around for a hundred freaking years that's a lot of money that you, I mean, paying a person a salary indefinitely, get, keeping up the, I mean, he has nobody else to help him keep up the the house. Well, I mean, he has all these people helping him keep up the house, but he's still keeping them in employ for a hundred freaking years, okay? So, a hundred years. Mm. So the so the guy's a nice guy. He's a capitalist, and he's only cursed because he wouldn't because he wouldn't go just give free food away. Please, and his uh his curse won't be lifted until he falls in love please he already loves his workers so much he keeps them around for a hundred years <coughs> <coughs> when they become grown 
and Trent convert back into humans, he owes them a hundred years of severance pay. That's a lot of years of money that he owes them. He's going to be broke by the time he actually, the curse is lifted. Unless he's just got a secret stash of millions and millions of good dollars of gold somewhere in the castle. Maybe that's the real reason Gaston is trying to kill him. Because he knows there's a secret stash of treasure in the vault of millions of dollars. And he'd be like, I want to kill him to get rich, take Bill, take over the kingdom and be the boss, Gaston! Anyway, so, there's that. So that is basically the story. We all know that he does fall in love. Because, well, here's the reason why he falls in love. The part that the feminists do not tell you about the, the, um, um, the, uh, princesses. You know what every one of these princesses are? Except some of the modern day Disney princesses. I mean the old school princesses. Every single slap in one of them are submissive to their man that they fall in love with. They're submissive. Shh. She doesn't really try to change him. She just shh, sticks with him. Sticks by her man. Doesn't try to change him. <coughs> just be a, a, a... She's herself and she submits to him. She... uh and she falls in love with him by being a, femi a feminine woman. She's not even a princess. She's just a common, common, she's just a common peasant girl. Now she's educated because she be reading books all the time because she's edu educated. And she knows how to dress, so that's a good uh, plus. <coughs> But she, she's the one that decided to to be like, let me serve my dad's time, basically. Which I think this guy's pretty lenient in his criminal time because, I mean, she she only had to serve the beast for like six months at most, six months, maybe four, maybe even only three months. That's not a very big punishment for somebody who breaks and enters and tries to commit a... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That's not a big punishment for somebody who breaks and enters. Who breaks and enters and tries to commit Attempted murder. Now, this guy deserves to get killed and die. Because he's trying to steal the dude's money, trying to kill him, and trying to take the dude's kingdom. Gaston it acts like he's the hero and trying to save the town, when in reality, he just wants the dude's money. He just wants the dude's riches. He just wants the dude's wealth. He just wants the dude's castle. He just wants to kill the dude and take the girl. He's, uh, and the only thing he's justifying it by doing is saying, well, the guy's a werewolf, so he's got to be evil, right? Because he's a werewolf. Freaking racist. So, that's why you won't be able to get up there because you don't want this evil prick to um win and conquer. So whoever gets up to the stairs first uh, wins. She gets there, they kiss, fall in love, blah blah blah, whatever. Now when the uh, so it's blah blah blah. Now, if he gets up there, he kills the dude. So that's the. Thing. Anyway, so you don't want him to win. <coughs> and really, it was totally the witch's fault for cursing him in the first place. Damn witch. More like a damn bitch. So, uh, the real beast is this guy, Gaston. 
so that's been my review of Beauty and the Beast, the the the, the TV show, I mean the movie, and the, the game that I have here. Remember, God's good all the time, all the time God's good. Jesus loves you. Like, comment, and subscribe, and um, keep on gaming, and keep on uh, watching my videos, and uh, tell me what you think about my anal an analysis of the Beauty and the Beast thing. Most people think it's Stockholm Syndrome. I really don't think it's Stockholm Syndrome. I think she literally fell in love with this guy because she realized he was a damn good guy. He just had, was a man. And he was a capitalist. And while he was tough, he kept his employees around for a hundred years. <laughs> and he didn't really even deserve what got given to him. I mean... From his perspective, it's like, I would have gave you a job if you had asked for one, and then we would have fed you. We'd even fed you before putting you to work. From the witch's perspective, it's like, give me free stuff. Like a liberal. So, the guy's a conservative, the guy's a capitalist, the guy kept his employees in business for a hundred years. The guy gets cursed all because he wouldn't give a socialist free shit for not doing shit and she curses him come on and this guy well while he's a hunter <coughs> he's also a conservative but he's a terrible con he might not i don't know if he's he is a revolutionary he wants to he secretly wants to override this guy's kingdom, take him out, steal his gold, and everything. So, this is an opportunist type capitalist. This is like a, a, a thief capitalist. This is more like a criminal. He's a criminal. He's a conservative. He's a criminal. He's wanting to kill, take house, steal gold, and he has no care at all for all these uh, creatures that were people that... He has no care whatsoever. Gaston does not give a damn about all these little people. He honestly, truly doesn't give a damn about Bill Because he's using Bill as an excuse for his act criminal activities. He's got three chicks that he can hit it and quit it any damn time he wants to at the park. <laughs> <laughs> probably more than three. He probably could get up with all three at the same time if he wanted to. This is a manly man, alpha male, criminal guy who's just a jerk. I mean, you know what he would have did if he had won and killed the dude? If he had won and killed the dude, he would have took his house, took his money, exiled all these little people probably married bell and you know forced her to be his wife probably married her but still had this three mistresses on the side and then he'd probably still go doing crazy shit like because once a criminal gets away with something and gets a taste of power he wants to expand his criminal enterprise so he'd take this over he'd take this little kingdom over <coughs> small kingdom over <coughs> and he would have then been um rule of an iron fist and he would have uh created him a little army and then he would have took over another town and another town and another town because oh. that's until somebody stopped him look good thing the beast while he was a beast had a big time fight with this guy which tells you this guy's tough to be able to fight a werewolf um and killed him but we really don't know if he's dead, but he should be dead. I mean, falling off a cliff and way down there, dude should be dead. So remember, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Jesus loves you. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I hope you liked my uh, review of the game. 
and my uh, my uh, analysis of the Beauty and the Beast movie. Have a great day, and uh, watch Beauty and the Beast. It's a pretty good movie.